Hey guys, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through an ABG interpretation practice problem from beginning to end, and this is gonna be part two, okay? So if you guys feel like you need more practice with interpreting ABGs, I made 10 free practice problems. You can click on the link in bio or link in description and get your free copy today. It'll be emailed to you, okay? 10 practice problems, answer key included. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really helps me out so I can keep making videos just like this one to continue with respiratory education. And at the end, if that's not enough information for you, please don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com. I have some blog posts on there I think you might like and other eBooks and free resources for you guys, okay? So without further ado, let's begin with ABG Interpretation Practice Problem Part 2. All right, so let's begin with ABG Interpretation Practice Problem Part 2. Also, like I said, don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com whenever you have a chance. So looking at this ABG, we have pH, PaCO2, PaO2, and then bicarb, right? So 7.46, 59, 65, 34, right? So like I said in a previous video of my original rules for ABG interpretation, you always look at what is the primary cause? So you have to look at the pH first, right? 7.46. So it's a little tiny bit alkalotic, right? 7.45 is the high side of normal. So then what is going to push it up? What is pushing the pH up? It's the bicarb, right? They have a direct relationship. So bicarb and pH have a direct relationship. If bicarb goes up, pH goes up. So the CO2 now. If you look at the CO2, it's high. It's well above normal. High normal is 45, right? So if it's 59, that's very, very high. Remember, pH and CO2 have an inverse relationship. So when CO2 goes up, pH goes down. So if pH is higher right now, the CO2 is not pushing it up, right? So what's pushing it up is the bicarb, which makes it metabolic and the kidneys are the culprit behind it, right? So 34 is the cause, right? So we would assign it metabolic alkalosis, but is it compensated? Meaning is the CO2 out of range and is it trying to compensate, right? And it is out of range. It's out of the 35 to 45 range. So we would say partially compensated, right? Not fully. We would say partially because the CO2 is out of range, but the pH is still not normal. If it was normal in the 735, 745, then we would say it is a fully compensated. But because it's not, we say partial because the pH is not in range, but the CO2 is trying to bring the pH back into a normal range. So we would say a partially compensated metabolic alkalosis with mild hypoxemia. Don't forget the oxygen, right? Mild hypoxemia, it was what, 65, I think? So moving on. This is a classic chronic respiratory failure picture, ABG, right? And so what would this patient look like, right? If we think about what kind of a patient would have this gas, um, I would say probably a fairly stable patient, right? And that patient would look like this, a digital clubbing patient, right? So digital meeting fingers, right? Clubbing, meaning they would have more of an arch over their nail, right? Most likely, this patient would not be short of breath, even though the CO2 is high, because the pH is almost normal, right? 7.45. If it was an acute event, that's why it's called chronic respiratory failure. If it was acute, meaning immediate in the present right now, the pH would be much lower and the CO2 would be even higher than 59, right? So if you have a pH change all the way into acidity because of the CO2, then we would say that's acute on a chronic patient, right? So this patient is most likely not short of breath because they don't have an acidosis. Even though they have high CO2, it doesn't mean that they're short of breath and it doesn't mean that they are having an acute event, right? They may have a barrel chest, right? These patients are typically hyperinflated type of patients, and they're most likely a smoker or were a smoker for a very long time or worked with asbestos and other really problematic inhaled pollutants in the environment, right? Or maybe they worked for a company like that. So this is what the patient might look like who has that kind of gas. 
respiratory interventions that we could do for this patient, what do you think? If the patient's not short of breath, even though their gas is like, maybe at first, if you're a new grad, it's like an uncomfortable gas to look at and do nothing, right? But really, that's what they need is nothing. They don't really need anything at the time. You might, you know, maybe you'll put like a liter of nasal cannula or two liters. But even that, I mean, it's really not necessary. As long as they're satting 88 to 92 for this patient population, that is totally normal and that's fine. As long as the pH is within a decent range and their PaO2 is not through the toilet in the 40s, right? This is where they live. This is where they live, right? So this is a classic COPD patient, ABG, right? Classic COPD. Um, we also call them the 50-50 club, right? Because their CO2 is going to be somewhere in the 50s and their PaO2 might be somewhere in the high 50s and 60s, right? So we call them the 50-50 club. That's just where they live. That's where they've adapted to live with their body being like that. This is a normal gas for that patient, Okay. So with that being said, I hope you learned something in this video. If you guys are struggling with ABGs, don't forget to check out my initial video about my rules and laying the groundwork for ABG interpretation. And I'll put that link in this description in this video so you guys can have that at your disposal, okay? So if you feel like some of what I'm talking about is a little bit over your head, then maybe go back to watch some of my earlier videos about ABG interpretation and how to identify and name them properly because once you start being able to name them properly then it becomes easier right and you're like oh this affects that and this affects that and this affects that right so um and i'll keep making more videos about abgs and interpretation for abgs and right now we're not even doing electrolytes we're not even doing lactate we're not even doing any of those things we're just keeping the basics strong because you really need that strong foundation in ABG interpretation before you can like start adding the other things like electrolytes and other medications that affect pH and all of these other things, right? So, so also don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on other social media outlets. And don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com whenever you get a chance. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot out of it and I hope you guys have a great day until next time. Have a good one.